You know, when you think about it, you need to have at least a little faith just to get out of bed in the morning. Faith basically means trust or confidence in someone or in something other than just yourself. Faith in this ordinary sense is therefore necessary because our individual human realities are radically dependent on other realities. As children, we need to trust our parents, our families, just in order to survive. The young, to a great degree, must live by faith because they are basically helpless. They need to trust older folks to feed them, take care of them, because they are in need of protection and education. They especially need love, which is necessary for healthy human existence. Faith can also mean confidence in a certain way of looking at the world. Faith implies an intellectual allegiance, an emotional connection to a system of values, or even to lack of values. Atheists have a certain kind of faith, although they usually do not recognize it. They may have an almost unshakable belief in nothing and posit this conviction sometimes intolerantly, without much evidence, but often with a complete absence of doubt. Modern atheists tend to simply assert that human existence is only a cosmic accident in a random universe, and therefore life really has no meaning. While St. Thomas Aquinas begins his extraordinary Summa Theologica with the great question, Utrum Deus Sit, or for those of you whose Latin vocabulary may have become a bit rusty, Thomas dares to ask whether or not there is a God. Today's atheists, on the other hand, with a kind of absolutist faith, tend to simply posit their dogma that there is no God or any transcendent value in our lives. Illogically and inconsistently, they often continue to live as if their lives did matter because deep within our shared human nature, there is a kind of predetermined <laughs> hunger for meaning and transcendence. Christian believers hold that faith, in its richest theological sense, is a supernatural gift from God. The three theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity are simply necessary for our salvation. As St. Paul taught the Thessalonians, remember your work of faith, your labor of love, and endurance in hope. All three of those necessary virtues are modes of relating. All three have God as their source, and all three are lived out in answer to God's invitation. They fundamentally define the relationship of finite humanity with the infinite God. Faith essentially says yes. Faith leads to deeper understanding. Faith freely assents to what God has so graciously revealed in Scripture and tradition. And after all, because God does know everything, to have faith in what God discloses is certainly not unreasonable. It is profoundly <laughs> rational to believe in what the all-knowing God reveals. And while there are some moments in life 
when faith could be described as being blind, Catholic Christianity confidently asserts that God has given us minds that we may know Him, hearts that we may love Him, and strength that we may serve Him. There are some truths that can only be fully understood by faith. But faith and reason are not incompatible. Faith and reason are attended by God to work together. Faith dramatically expands our horizons, giving us an open-ended framework that allows us to search and especially invites us to wonder. Faith is a way of living marked by trust in the goodness of God and in the value of existence. Faith is a repudiation of despair and an invitation to relate with generosity to one another. As the ancient church father, St. Irenaeus, once explained, without God, there is nothing without purpose. I mean, with God, there is nothing without purpose, nothing without meaning, nothing without reason. In today's appointed gospel, according to Matthew, Jesus assures his disciples that if they had the faith, even the size of a small mustard seed, nothing would be impossible. Here the Lord gives us an essential teaching. Faith connects us to God, who truly is almighty. Faith binds us to the very source of being, binds us to the supreme being, who in the beginning created everything out of nothing. Faith plunges us into the awesome reality of God's great love that truly is without end. And faith does move mountains whenever we surrender our lives to the will of God. Jesus taught us to pray with faith to God our Father. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Or just as he himself prayed with the deepest possible faith in his Father on the night before he died for us, he prayed, not my will, Father, but yours be done. And God powerfully answered his prayer. The Father strengthened him to endure his passion. And Christ's faith was gloriously vindicated when he rose up triumphant from the grave as the conqueror of sin and death. So, as Christians, we should not have the Lord's name on our lips and then try to live without faith. But if we make room for Christ, we become enriched beyond all compare. Because putting our faith in Jesus, his victory becomes our victory. The battle was the Lord's, but the crown becomes ours. As the prophet Habakkuk teaches in today's first reading, the just man, because of his faith, shall live. Now, I am happy to know that many of you serve in a variety of ministries as teachers and administrators, as counselors and coaches, as sponsors and catechists. In a world so marked by moral confusion, by discouraging pessimism, by a culture of death, by rebellion against God and a profound perversion of values, you will need, as long as you live, to be men and women of deep faith and unwavering commitment to your Lord. Together with your priests and deacons, encouraged by the powerful witness of our many consecrated religious, filled with faith, hope, and charity, you will need to stand out in this world and not blend in. You are, even on this earth, citizens of heaven, the people of God, the army of Christ. You are called to be the light of the world, a city 
built on a hilltop which cannot be hidden. The source of your faith-filled conviction and the summit of your faith-filled service is always the Mass. The Mass is the Church's greatest treasure because the Mass truly makes present among us the one perfect sacrifice of Christ on the cross. So know in faith that the bread becomes the body of Christ who died for us, and the cup becomes the blood of Christ that flowed from his side. In faith, take and eat his body, take and drink his blood, and even in this life, even on earth, you will be in communion with your Lord and your God. That is why the Mass is the Feast of Love. That is why the Mass is the Feast of Hope. That is why the Mass is supremely the Feast of Faith. Then with enormous confidence that faith gives, dare to become a part of what you receive, actually become a part of Jesus Christ, who is our teacher, who is our high priest, who is our beginning and our ending, who is our Savior and our Lord, who is our God among us. And so as his chosen disciples, do not be afraid. Do not give up. Never chicken out. Do not hesitate, even to move mountains.